What's up guys? Of course, welcome to another video from me, The Scarender. And today we have another top 10 list for you guys. Now, I do believe that last time I did a top 5 list, I did a list of the Pokemon I thought was in the wrong tier. It was more a wish list of Pokemon I want to see in a different tier. Um, not bound by the tiers whatsoever. I got a lot of hate in that video and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that. I definitely suspected something like that. This video is more intuitive with the thoughts on the tier itself or, and on the Pokemon on its own. So uh, I wanted to use make a list that was top 10 underused Pokemon, but due to that being a tier, we're gonna call it underappreciated instead, and I think that kind of points out, uh, besides being a lot longer title, um, it's definitely also gonna mean that these Pokemons are in the right tier, but aren't used as often as they should be, because these Pokemons are still fairly strong and good. So, with all these in mind, guys, let's start with number 10 spot. And for the number 10 spot, we actually have a... I'm gonna be a bit weird here, but we actually have two Pokemons here, both Pelipper and Mansign. Um, basically because they do the same thing in its residual tiers. Uh, they're both awesome walls. Pelipper is one of those water flying pokes like Mantine. Um, walling every fighting type really really good with a very high base defense stats and high HP stats. It can do a lot of damage. Uh, Mantine pretty much the same type of Pokemon but it's instead more specially defensively oriented. These two makes a very very good wall for any team in its lower tier, both in PU and NU. Um, I definitely prefer Mantine as a standalone Pokemon, but the Pokemon can defog, Pelipper has access to Roost, which makes it a bit more edgy, but at the same time, there aren't a lot of special defensive walls in the lower tier, but besides using the Violite and Assault Vest, Mantine on its own stands very, very tall, very, very strong too, it can hit hard with air, likes of Scald and, of course, Air Slash, while Pelipper has access to, of course, Scald on its own, but also Hurricane. Like I said, both of these Pokemons perform extremely well and uh, aren't used as often as they should be because they're very, very smart defoggers and good hitters in this residual tier. And that's why both are in the 10th spot. And coming in at the number 9 spot is Fro. Now, Fro is one of those Pokemons that I think have gotten a cold shoulder due to and you really, really wanting or needs Ball Breakers to perform adequately and good um, with Sok, its elder brother, and Galadir, and of course even Girder to some extent, um, Fro gets often forgotten and people are, um, well, aren't using it as much as it really should. Uh, like I said, I know fighting types in the lower tier are being more treated like a revenge killer and even as a sweeper, uh, Fro doesn't really perform like that or rather isn't ha having really the speed to do that with a 55 base, but what it does bring instead is an extremely high base uh, HP, like 120 is super good for a tier and combine it with 85 bases in both defenses and a super high base attack of 100, this thing performs adequately and really well and with the likes of Guts, Inner Focus and Mold Breaker, this thing can really really do a lot of damage to a team. I really like the Guts set with Rest Sleep Talk, it's just one of those things that it's too hard to kill. It really is, and with access like the knockoff, it really performs like any other fighting type. Like I said, it is slower, but it isn't really going down, and it isn't threatened by a lot of Pokemons. So, it not being used as often kind of perplexed me, and that is what is really on the number 9 spot. It is a fairly good Pokemon. And kicking it at the number 8 spot is actually Medisham. Now, Fro and Medisham do have similar kind of treatments in this residual tier. Uh, Medisham is, um, after been using it for quite some time, uh, I must say, Medicham is very, very unappreciated in its own tier. Ryu is definitely a good tier for it, I do believe it performs well there. And uh, it's one of the few like good fighting types in it. Sadly has been outmatched with the like of Cabalion, but it now being gone as of uh, this video, uh, it should kinda climb up, it really should. But I think it base 80 speed is what makes it kinda not hard to use. Um, that's the wrong word, but rather uh, it makes sure that it can't come in on anything, and with the likes of Meloetta, for example, with normal fighting type could be in bond with a much, much heavier hitter. Uh, I definitely see why Medicham isn't as used as often, but I think those are gonna change. Because with the likes of Priority Bullet Punch, it hits very hard. Uh, Drain Punch would make sure that this thing gets some kind of recovery going, 
and of course the like of the Psycho Boost or Psycho Cut which takes on the most things really and Ice Punch to take on the, f the few flying types in this tier. Medicham is very very good and performing very very well in its tier but it just hasn't seen really as much usage these days for some reasons and what really makes this Pokemon unique for the few that, of you that aren't really in bond with RU it is that this thing got freaking pure power which means it got double attack which also means that it hits so goddamn hard and if you are worried about the drain punches and do it enough then slap that high jump kick on it and scarf him and that speed issue that you were talking about it is not even on the map anymore and this thing kills so many things like the top threats like say Tyrantrum for example is not gonna take it it is not possible so Medisham like I said very very good Pokemon are you I don't get what this thing isn't getting as much love as it really should because it is a threat and I really like this Pokemon and I think it looks it's one of those Pokemon that I would say look really really fugly and for you people who know what that means it basically means that this thing is not pretty it's not pretty at all it's definitely a Mr. Mime feeling on it but anyway that is why it is a number 8 spot it's fugly kicking it at of course the number 7 spot is Scolipede now Scolipede is the Beedrill of generation 5 on freaking steroids I just can't believe how good Scolipede really really is it is bound to OU and um, I guess by that alone it isn't finding as much usage anymore but yeah this thing can really hold its own it gets one of those mood pools that just you watch it like that is definitely like Nidoking area of mood pools got access to rock slide superpower uh, earthquake for some freaking reason Scalabit is a freaking horse of a bug it is just so good I really like this Pokemon and got access to the, one of those magical abilities that is speed boost which makes sure that you can invest in something else on it and still will outspeed almost anything in this tier it's naturally fast, it naturally is super 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 strong and I just don't get it and this thing should definitely be more used in the OU I truly believe that I don't see it that often uh, most people treat it as a bad impasser and if you do that, then you're going down. Of course, with the new rules, it's not very likely that it is that anymore. So we're gonna find this thing, hit things hard, and you're gonna die. You're gonna die, bruh. And that is why it is on the number 7 spot. Coming in at number 6 is, of course, the Macha Lucha, or How Lucha. How Lucha is a very, very unique Pokemon because it got a BL band very, very early in X and Y. Hasn't been really re-evaluated since then. It actually actual part of RU once that actually started off and it was pushed to UU who was considered too strong for UU and was moved even further. Now with new moves inbound of course with of course a new tutor from Auras, I really think Kalucha should be reevaluated for UU but as of right now it's caught in limbo in the BL tier and it's basically because of uh, what it did before that. It has a very, very unique thing going for it. You got access to the likes of Limber, Unburden, which of course with Power Herb Sky Attack makes this thing well basically a demon and also gets access to Mold Breaker. Now I don't find Mold Breaker that usable in uh, for the Pokemon alone but as as far as Unburden go, my god. And of course we got the White Herb Super Power combo which works really good for it and uh, besides that we got moves like Drain Punch for some reasons on it and even Thunder Punch and Headbutt. It actually have Tailwind so it can utilize other things you want to use it like that. It isn't really that powerful, only with the 92 base attack, which is kind of modest, but at the same time it got one of those godly speed stats of 118, and that was kind of what makes this Pokemon fairly good to be honest. And it got some decent, decent HP, but um, the defenses are in the league of Archeops, so we, yeah, it's not really gonna take any hit whatsoever. Uh, but the speed makes it good, the Unburden makes it good, even the Limber against those Prankster Thunderous with T-Wave, uh, it can definitely deal with that very very well. I really like how Lucha is a standalone Pokemon, um, and while I did make a recording for this video, I kind of realized that Gravity kills it, like the move Gravity really kills it. Uh, you got access to High Jump Kick and Scatai, like I said before, which is a Santa set of course for the Super Power, or for the um, Power Herb set. Now with a 1 Gravity, 
it, it is unable to move whatsoever, and that's really, really funny. <laughs> it actually is. But like I said, how Lucha is a really, really good Pokemon. It might not be that good for um, the likes of um, OU, but it is a good Pokemon, and it's, I find it barely used in OU for that very reason alone. Uh, like I said, reevaluate this thing and just package it, reover it, and put it back in that tier. I really want to see this thing in UU. I think it could be used well there. And if it is too powerful, then be it again. But uh, definitely, definitely use this Pokemon more often. We need this guy out of the BL to the OU. And the demon is gonna introduce number 5 spot. It's Rampardos! Rapidos is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. I really regret never playing Generation 4 with this beast was introduced. While it has the highest base attack besides of any legendary Pokemon, of course, of Deoxys and Mega Mewtwo, this was actually a Pokemon that was unrivaled with its high base attack of 165 until Mega Godchamp got there with 170. Rampardos just might be one of the coolest Pokemon of all time. Um, like I said, one of my favorite Pokemon. Um, it is just one of those beasts. Um, it's kind of surprising not seeing it used more often. I kind of get it. Um, with, of course, a very, very respectable base HP of 97 base, it still has one of those badly defensive stats of 60 and 15 special defense. And, of course, being a bit on the slow side with the 58 base, um, we do get it. We truly do. Uh, it really needs some kind of support to work better. But the thing that makes this Pokemon so goddamn good and really, really unique is actually that it got access to Mold Breaker and Shear Force. Shear Force makes this thing a bit more worse because then you don't tend to really uh, rely on head smash as often. You just need to go for Rock Slide and get that Life Orb Rock Slide boost, which is just unheard of. Rampardos just might be one of the most versatile Pokemon in its very own tier. And I just can't believe it isn't used more often. Um, I don't really know what more I have to say about it. I'd really mention its godly, godly base attack. And that should be more than enough to realize that this thing is your death. And um, yeah, I can't explain it much more than that. Um, it is a truly a very, very nice Pokemon. And it should be used more often in NU. I can't believe it isn't. Um, number 5 is very, very suiting for it, and uh, yeah, it's a beast, it's a Rampardos. Coming in as number 4 spot is probably the cutest guy in this list. Chinchino is one of those Pokemon that I can't believe how good it is. It is too cute to be this good. It, it has, you know, some respectable abilities like cute charm, but that is obviously not what makes this Pokemon good. Even Technician could be considered good to some extent, but no. Nah, 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 brah. We're gonna go with skilling. We're gonna make this thing so goddamn strong. And it has access to the like of Bullet Seed, Rock Blast, and actually the thing that makes it Tail Slap. Now, Tail Slap can miss. And you'd be glad if it misses, because this thing packs 95 base attack. Yeah, it's just unheard of. And consider that its speed, 115, it is not many things that are gonna outspeed that in RU. It is just so good. I can't believe how good this Pokemon is, and I can't believe I haven't used it as much as I really should have. Uh, Chinchino is truly a unique Pokemon. It is definitely, definitely should be used more often. Um, it also got good filler moves with the moves, of course, like U-Turn, Aqua Tail, and it even if you want to, got access to Thunder Wave, have you suspecting a switch out. Um, not much more to say about him. This thing is one of those Pokemon that this is definitely a glass cannon. And it hurts. It hurts badly. And it got cute charms. And that is why it is on the number 4 spot, guys. Use it. Number 3 is gonna be Bronzong. Or, as you guys might know if you follow me, the Cowbell. Now, Bronzong is one of those Pokemon that I can't believe it's only seen RU. It is just that good. Now, I know that Psychic and Steel is not anymore as good of a typing as it was before, uh, once of course X and Y was introduced, but this thing still hold up. Like, with the access of Levitate, it could actually nullify one of its biggest weaknesses, but that is not even the best part. You know what the best part is? Do you know it? No. It has access to the likes of Heat Proof, which means that you control your opponent. This thing got access to the, really a lot of things that can make it work. 
It is one of those defensively Pokemon that just can stand tall. And I am glad this thing doesn't have like recovery moves besides of rest because this thing is really really mean. And it cannot set up stealth rocks, it can hurt kinda bad. I actually got some respectable offensively stats when I use it for that. But most people use it for of course the defensive stats. Hell, I'll use it for the defensive stats alone. I use this only to be dealing with Mammoth Wines back in OU because this thing can deal with those really well. You get knockoff, yeah sure man, you go for it and I'll just rest up. And that's it, there is no way we can beat this Pokemon. Bronzong, you're the man, um, very glad this Pokemon is around and people should be using it more often because it is really good competitively. Make it happen guys. Number 2, Ninjask. Now this. This is a Pokemon that I'll never get why it is only in PU as of right now. With 160 base speed, there is no, not a Scarfer in the tier that is going to outspeed is naturally. Uh, with its natural speed around that, there is no way in hell you can outspeed it. I really like using Geoliset with Choice Band. Most of you guys know him as Jade. Uh, he has been the crowning jewel of almost every NU team I had. Because this thing just U turn and hurts like real bad. Got access to light of Night Slash, you wanna go with that. It can use Air Lace, though I don't recommend it. It kinda sucks. But one thing it does got is actually Dig. It can't deal with its weaknesses. I know that Dig isn't that viable, but I can't tell you guys how many times I actually pulled a Dig on an Explode because of my opponent just gonna go for it. I love it. Uh, plus, it, it also is very likely to be the last Pokemon on your team, and if your Dig kind of hit super effectively on everything in his team, then you're good to go. Uh, I actually took out a Mega Manetric with a Choice Banded Dig because that was the last matchup and it couldn't outspeed me because I'm naturally faster. It was one of the crowning jewels of uh, any battle I ever had really. Ninjask is truly an underappreciated Pokemon and I do encourage you guys to use this more often. I know it's weak to Stealth Rocks, I know, but with the defenses that it has it's not gonna be very likely to take a hit anyway, so you might as well just deal with that. 90 base attack is more than enough with Choice Band to deal with a lot of things. Now I know that that's a very very easy set, but hell, you don't need Ninjas for anything else, and of course with the likes of uh, Infiltrator instead of Speed Boost, you don't need Speed Boost, you just you don't. Infiltrator takes care of one of the meanest sets in OU, and um, that is actually gonna beat um, Baton Pass and Scolipede into Espeon. Um, I went up against one of those, instead of a substitute I couldn't break the sub, Ninjask just came through with Infiltrator U-turn and just break it in half. It was awesome. I've never been so proud of this Pokemon. I just, I can't believe how good it is. And um, it is easily the reason alone why it should be on this spot. It is definitely only one Pokemon that I think is more worth the number one spot. And that is going to be... Or actually, before we're doing that, we have to have the honorable mentions. Kinda hit me through there. That there are a lot of Pokemon on this list that really fits. And we have to mention them, we really do. I have at least five Pokemon that didn't make it, that I feel are unappreciated. And um, they were just as likely to, just like Pelipper and Mantine, to get a spot on this list. And it came down to fundamentals, and uh, these guys are, as you see on the screen, Tropius, Malmar, Cacturn, Dusclops, and Flygon. I really wanted to put Dusclops and Flygon on this list, but I do realize that Flygon is fairly goodly used now in RU. And Dust Club is kind of find a new footing in um, actually PU, so it's doing well. Uh, they're both doing well and um, are definitely caught up on. Cacturn on the other side, not that often. And Malamar, while widely used in NU, it still hasn't really been used to uh, what I would say is its highest of potentials. And Tropius, it's not used at all. And um, it came down to that probably. It's very very easy sets for Tropius to work, but at the same time we need a lot of work into it, so I just I couldn't find the way to put Tropius on this list. But Flygon and Dusk Club are probably the closest one to get there, and um, besides that, um, <laughs> that actually makes the list. So my number one spot is a Pokemon that I know a lot of people love, and a Pokemon that should definitely be used more often this day, and he is Pan Fucking Goro. So this is actually the reason alone I made this list. Pangoro, wow, just wow, really now. Pangoro is such a weird Pokemon. It's got such a 
weird history to it. I'm a big fan of Pangoro. I used it when it wasn't in you. I couldn't get enough of it. And um, that's right, it wasn't in you. Not too long ago. It wasn't until Auras was introduced and it got access to the rest of the moves that this thing actually exploded. So I really want to give you guys a quick history on how this thing was used back in the days. Uh, because it got access to Iron Fist, which is a very, very nice ability if you know what you do with it. Um, which wasn't really the case in um, in X and Y. It only got access to Dissipunch and I believe Common Punch, which is not really that good. And then you got the hidden ability Scrappy, which feels really weird when you know what this thing is like Dark type, which makes this ability kind of redundant. Yeah, it, it's really redundant. So most people use the Mold Breaker EQ on this. And it was a scarf set most of the time, and um, it wasn't really that well utilized. It just it didn't have really what it needed to kind of work in that environment. And as I mentioned before, Iron Fist is a thing, and it actually wasn't. An, or actually, we should mention the egg moves in this thing. You know, with the base of 124 base attacks, you would believe that it should get access to a very very good fighting attacks, right? Well, we got Hammer Arm, which could miss. I also got Sky Uppercat, which actually used the drill or the um, Iron Fist a bit. Uh, you got access to Parting Shot, which was the reason most people used the Scarf Down in the first place. But when it comes to egg moves, you got freaking me first. Yeah. And I got Storm Throw, which was actually what most people were using. And uh, besides that, I got Squash and Foul Play. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's really, really bad. Uh, it still has a very, very bad egg pool, to be honest. So, like I said, it wasn't until Ors was introduced and the move Drain Punch was introduced. Yeah, you know, with a Pokemon with actually fairly, very, fairly good defenses, I wouldn't say they're good. Uh, it got 78 in usually regular defense and 71 in special defense, but it got a very, very nice uh, HP base of 95. Uh, this thing got kinda good. Um, like I said, very very general set was actually Assault Vest. I myself used that with Drain Punch. This thing just wouldn't go down. You know, even with the weakness of Finding and Flying being very very common, the reason this thing still worked really well and was actually quite a, kinda bulky was that the thing that is weak to Fairy, which a 4 times weakness to it, isn't real that common in NU. Hell, it isn't that common in RU. So this thing got the BL listing. Um, one of the sets that I've seen around usually was actually um, due to him having the Iron Fist, as I mentioned before. It actually got access to Fire Punch, Ice Punch, uh, like I mentioned before, Drain Punch, and Thunder Punch, and even Knock Off, which makes it even better. But the thing that made it so goddamn good was that people switched out on this thing. This thing sets up a substitute, and you got the Focus Punch. Yes! You got the freaking focus punch, and what makes that even worse is that people actually use this set to um, actually deal with the dew blade in the tier. And you know what happened? They had scrap on this thing, and they focus punched that bitch out of the tier. Damn, this thing just wow! Pangoro is one of the biggest pleasures of my Pokemon I ever got to see, uh, both working, evolving and actually climbing in the tier. I do believe that UU is a very nice tier for it. I wouldn't mind having it back in RU because I love that Pokemon so much, but it is just too powerful. And it isn't used as often in UU, and I get that. It has a lot of issues with the likes of Florius, but guys, you know what? It has access to Gunk Shot, that kills Florius, and it should, with the right investment, you should be able to actually outspeed a Florius so make this guy worth using again. I am definitely gonna use this guy more often. I can't believe I stopped using it because, like I said, it's really good. And yeah, like I said, this was the reason alone I made this list. And this is the reason we're kicking in at 27 minutes. Wow, this is a very, very long list. I'm sorry about the minutes, guys. Like I said, Pangoro was the reason I did it listening in the beginning. And I realized that this subject got way bigger than I thought it would. So we're gonna make this... Yeah, we're gonna actually try to end this video now, I'm sorry. So if you guys have any Pokemon that you feel are underappreciated and uh, should have more of reach out um, in the future, or even now, really, uh, make sure to write that down below. I will read them, I do appreciate everything you guys really say. And like I said, these are definitely just my personal opinions. And um, yeah, I think 
I truly believe a lot of these guys should get more love than they do today, and uh, I really hope you guys agree. So, with all this in mind, guys, I want to thank you for watching, as always, of course, and um, yeah, if you like this video, make sure to leave your stats a like, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, and remember, the sky's the limit, and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care. Bye.